Politics and food may not mix at the dinner table during the holidays, but that's certainly not the case on the campaign trail. Ed O'Keefe has traveled across the country with 2020 presidential hopefuls for months. Ed, why is food such a hot topic on the campaign trail? Oh, Jerika, because it's everywhere. One thing we've noticed throughout this past year out on the trail is that food is one of the ways candidates are drawing voters in by appearing at events where food is the main attraction or by serving it up themselves. Sometimes the candidate serves it up just right, but campaigning with food can also be a high stakes gamble. In South Carolina, it's fish. In Iowa, it's steak or corn dogs. In New Hampshire, they serve up politics and eggs. The candidate speaks and then signs wooden eggs. Anywhere you go with the candidates, there's cameras and catering. Throw me some more seasoning, would you? It helps draw a crowd, fuels the campaign, and offers the candidate a chance to connect with people. Let's not flounder. Let's get out there and kick some bass. The big thing with food is the idea that it tells us important things about who you are. Emily Contois is a food and media scholar at the University of Tulsa who studies the intersection of food and politics. With a presidential candidate, the hope is that by getting to eat with this person or seeing them eat a food from your local area, that you get a better sense of who they are as a person. But sometimes watching a politician eat can leave a bad taste in the mouths of voters. Remember when Gerald Ford ate a tamale without removing the husk? Or when George H.W. Bush said he didn't like broccoli? And I haven't liked it since I was a little kid. And I'm president of the United States. And I'm not going to eat any more broccoli. Or that time Gary Bauer fell off a New Hampshire stage while flipping pancakes. Oh, oh no! When John Kerry ordered Swiss cheese on his Philly cheesesteak, the city of brotherly love loathed him. And recently, Pete Buttigieg got fried online for slicing a cinnamon roll and eating it like a chicken wing. My hope is that instead of us harping on candidates when they make these mistakes, is that we encourage them to ask questions, right? When you go into a restaurant that you've never been to before, to say, I haven't had this, but I'm so excited to try it. Over the summer, we stopped in Columbia, South Carolina at the world famous Clyburn Fish Fry, hosted by House Majority Whip, Jim Clyburn. It was his largest ever. More than 4,400 fish sandwiches served for thousands of voters there to see nearly two dozen candidates. Here we go. Moment of truth. Mm. That is good. Did you, did you pass your test? Oh, of course you did. In Iowa, the state fair is a must stop for any presidential contender. There's corn dogs to eat, pork chops to flip, and ice cream to lick. In September, candidates headed back to Iowa for a local Democratic steak fry. And this weekend, you're catering for? 10,000 attendees at the Polk County Democratic Steak Fry. How many of these steak fries have you been to through the years? Oh, I don't know, a bunch. While voters eat, candidates flip steaks and buy the beer and try to prove they've got what it takes. Are the crowds coming for the politicians or are they coming for the food? Uh, I think the politicians are like a la mode. <laughs> little food joke. Senator Amy Klobuchar thinks that catching up with voters over a meal is essential for any politician. They may do it over a root beer float or over a tiny Tim donut, but they talk to you. And that's what you want to have as a politician. You don't want to become so insulated that the only people you hear from are on Twitter feed. And that's why I think it's so important to go to things like state fairs and eat the food with the people. We got lots of tips from the candidates about how they handle food when the campaigning. Senator Klobuchar, for example, told us her strategy is to avoid buying big servings herself and instead just try bites of everything she's offered by voters. <laughs> Very <laughs> nice, Ed. I know in your piece the experts said it's all about being able to get a sense of who people are through the food that they eat. So who are you, Ed? What do you eat on the campaign? <laughs> well, it's not just me, Jerika. We <laughs> polled our producers, uh, our hardworking campaign reporters in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, who travel with the candidates all over the country, said, guys, remind me, what is it you are eating in between events as you try to fuel your day? Among other things, uh, the Albanese uh, gummy bears. Uh, these are my go-to during a debate, especially. Okay. Uh, beef jerky. Uh, if you haven't tried a pickle in a bag, I highly mm. recommend it. Take me seriously here, one. folks. Oh. It's vegetables, it's salt, you're driving, it's great. Uh, one of our guys, Alex, who's based out in the West, uh, pointed out that he has easily downed several bananas uh, during long trips between events. And at I the end of the day, several of them admitted they like a good bottle of wine. Has there been an Ed O'Keefe <laughs> report on the average weight gain after a presidential <laughs> campaign? So you, you can very easily, if you're not careful, you can very easily gain several, yes. And, and then the odd number year afterward is the year you just uh, 
Starve yourself, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Happy New Year, Mr. O'Keefe. Happy New you Year. You too, guys. Take care. Thank